Hey all, Tom Moran here from Tom's Big Spiders. Well, it's been a while. I think one of the first husbandry videos I ever did on YouTube featured the T. albopilosis back then, the Brachypelma albopilosum. Well, I think it's time for an update on this one. It's been a while and I have what has turned out to be a young male that needs a rehousing. So we're gonna go ahead and rehouse, talk a little bit about everybody's favorite fluffy spider. So enough of me talking, let's get into the actual rehousing, husbandry notes, and the video. All right, so we're about to rehouse my Tleet Locatl albopilosis. This is the Nicaraguan variant, which is considered to be the one that you can... It, it should be the pure variant. The problem with the other variant that's been on the market is there is worries of some crossbreeding with other species. Not to say that every single one of the other variant, the Hondurans, are all hybrids, but it is something to consider. And the reason why the Nicaraguans have been so popular lately is because a lot of people feel like that at least if they get a Nicaraguan, which I believe was introduced in 2011, if I'm not mistaken, then they at least have the pure, true albopilosis. But they're awesome spiders. They make the majority of beginners lists. I believe on my top 13 list is chosen by people who keep them. They were number one. They're usually, as adults, fairly laid back and tractable, which makes them very attractive to people who are just starting to keep tarantulas. And the fact that they look so fuzzy and fluffy, I think is also attractive to people who are just picking up tarantulas. But a word to note, the Nicaraguan variant of these guys, some people have reported that theirs are high strung and even a little bit defensive. I do have a theory on that because I've had some people talk about theirs being more high strung and defensive, but they were also wild caught specimens. And just know that anytime you get a wild caught spider, chances are the behaviors are going to be different than that of one that was raised and, and captive bred in captivity, those tend to be a little more docile, wherein the wild caught ones, they were ripped out of the wild and shoved in a little terrarium, so you might get some of those nasty behaviors. So that's something to keep in mind. But awesome species, medium growth rate for that type of spider. This one, when I picked up, was about an inch and a half or so. And that was back uh, three years ago, I believe in 2019, summer of 2019. It is now pushing about four, four and a half inches. So it put on a great deal of size. They're eating machines. They have a great feeding response, which is fantastic. And I'm talking, I was just posted up a video of my top 100 plus spiders and a couple of people came on the comments and talked about the fact that their albopilosis are voracious eaters. So that can't be overlooked. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna move it from this container here. Now, when I first got it, I had it in a 16 ounce deli cup. Then we put it in this Sistema enclosure, which is eight, eight inches long by six by 4.5 inches deep or so. It did have a cork bark hide in there. Keep in mind, slings will burrow, some juveniles will burrow. This one wasn't burrowing that much, so I put it in something a little more shallow, but here it'll have the opportunity to burrow again if it wants it. So over here, we have an M-Design shoe box. This is 12 inches by seven by seven inches or so. We've got a mixture of cocoa fiber and topsoil and some vermiculite leaf litter, water dish, and some sphagnum moss. And what I got here is cork bark that I've covered over. We have a little burrow, so we'll see if it wants to do some burrowing in there. So let's get this one already. Looks like it's ready to go out and about. Watch it jump. There it is. Told you. <laughs> Call that one. No, you're good. And there was cardboard around here, but we're going to do a different trick. There you go. So, there's a little... So cute. I love the hairs. And you can oh, see this one, so compared cool. to my other albopilosis, is much, much more fluffy. You're so fluffy. What's that from? Let's see if we got a nut kicker. Oh, it's a Animated movie. Oh, uh, girl does it. Despicable Me, right? Yes. The... There you go. There you go. There you go. No, nope, you're going out. Is that new home? Perfect. Hey. Right. Nope, nope, no, nope, we're not going on a walkabout. We're not going on a walkabout. Hold on. In there. Get your little feet out of the way. Feet. No, nope, she is going on a little walkabout. So we'll just keep that closed for a second. When she gets back down, I'll open it back up. Now, something I want to mention with these. I did a video way back, it's like my old crummy Tom's Big Spiders one where it was just me talking and a lot of ums and one of the older ones, terrible footage, but we talked about the care of them. There used to be stuff out there that said they were moisture dependent, that they need to be kept humid. I have found that the majority of them, especially the older specimens, do well dry with the water dish. However, 
Again, with that whole wild caught thing, the wild caught specimens are going to be more inclined to want a situation that mirrors their natural habitat. So if you have a wild caught one and you moisten down part of the substrate, you may find that it seems to appreciate that. And that's generally the rule of thumb with determining whether or not a species or a particular tarantula wants the moisture. If you moisten part of the substrate down and it gravitates toward that area, or if you give it moist substrate and it burrows down to the moist substrate, it wants it. So this one here, the substrate is mostly dry. There's a little moist substrate in the bottom. We'll see how it goes. But this one has not shown a preference for it. I would say that I would keep slings on slightly moist substrate. I'd definitely not let them dry out. Juveniles, again, keep part of the substrate moist. But as adults watch, see what happens when the spider you know, gets a little bit bigger if it really seems to prefer the moist substrate. If it doesn't, then you can get away with just a water dish. And I have seen this one and my other albopelosives drink. I have a female and a male that is since, I, send, I think I sent the male off to breed, but they both, I would catch them drinking every once in a while. Neither of them seem to show any preference for the moist substrate, so it's not a big deal. But again, give them the choice. It doesn't always hurt, but I have heard people tell me that they tried to give theirs moist substrate because they read that they needed moist substrate and these tarantulas would not come down and touch the substrate until it dried out. So just something to keep in mind. Now, as far as eating, they eat like machines. You can get pre-killed to smaller slings and smaller specimens. Juveniles, obviously, once they hit about an inch, an inch and a half, you can give them live prey and something small. Larger adults, I feed this one two or three crickets, and usually every two weeks or so. You don't have to feed them quite as often as slings. I'll feed them uh, twice a week because I'm trying to get them out of that sling stage. But again, they eat great, as Brew barks in the background because he wants to be up here. Uh, temperatures, usually my temperatures in the wintertime are mid to low 70s. In the summertime, they are high 70s, so every once in a while 80. I will say in the new house with the new tarantula room, we've already hit mid to high 80s in here a few days, so I got a funny feeling it's going to be warmer. So know that warmer temperatures will re lead to faster metabolisms and faster growth rate. And I did have a buddy of mine that kept hers at around 85 to 87 degrees, and it grew like a weed, so just something to keep in mind. All right, so there we go. T. albopelosis, wonderful spider, definitely a hobby staple, very readily available. Great spiders, again, definitely one that you can consider a beginner species. The majority of people that do have them will report that theirs are quite at least laid back, if not handleable. But always keep in mind there are exceptions to those rules, and temperaments may vary from spider to spider and from molt to molt. So I just had somebody contact me that had, it was a, actually a G pulcropes that was super docile for years, it molted, and now it's a terror. So always keep that in mind and be cautious when you engage in any type of close contact like handling. So there we go, T. Albopelosus, awesome spider. This one finally has a home that's worthy of it because that did definitely outgrown that other one. So as I alluded to in the introduction of this video, after we rehoused him, he stopped eating a little bit, and then two days ago I came in to discover this. Yep, he is now a happy, mature male. You can see here, if you look closely, you can't see the emboli or pedipalps, but you can see the hooks, which gives them the term hooking out when the males become mature. So it looks like we'll be looking for a lady for him pretty soon. Kind of a shame because it's the only Nicaraguan I have. And over here, however, we have this beautiful young lady. This is my Honduran curly hair, or the hobby form as it's also known as. I, again, no idea whether she's a pure blood or not. And that's the problem with this whole situation is when you know that there are some hybrids in the hobby, you're not quite sure which ones are the hybrids, which ones aren't. But as you can see, she looks a little bit different from the Nicaraguan in that her overall base color is a lot lighter and those curls aren't quite as profound. Still a beautiful little spider, big old fat booty on her. I don't know when she's going to molt. I honestly thought she was going to molt about a year ago, but she still continues to eat. I offer food every few months or so just to see if she's still eating, and she's still eating, but quite big. And as far as growth rate, I must mention that I just recently did a video featuring my fastest growing tarantulas, and I asked keepers out there to name their fastest growing tarantulas, and the T. albopelosis was mentioned quite a bit, just behind the L. parahybana, which is considered to be one of the faster growing species out there. Now, I didn't experience this growth with mine, but again, this isn't just about me, it's about what other keepers are seeing in their collections, and apparently a lot of you have spoken, and a lot of you have very fast growing T. albopelosis. So if that's the case, those looking at this species as far as picking one up for their first tarantula or as a beginner species will be happy to learn that they may have a three to four inch spider before too much time is up. 
So that will do it for this one. As always, if you like it enough to subscribe, very much appreciate. Click the little circle up in there. If you'd like to check out more of my videos, see what I'm about, you will find them over here. If you take the time to comment, know that I will take the time to respond and respond to every comment out there. It just may take me a couple days because I tend to get a lot of them. Guys, that'll do it for this one. Stay safe. We'll catch you all next time.